In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about cost theory and I'm going to use some calculus. This is the third video in a series. Each video is independent, but this is the third in a series of three. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss or I'm going to show you how to use calculus. Let me draw the graphs in so I can show you what I'm doing as I do the calculus. And I, first I draw the total cost curve in. And total cost is a function of quantity. It changes as quantity changes. Now I'll draw in the total variable cost. It's also a function of quantity. It changes as quantity changes. And lastly, I'll draw in the fixed cost curve, or it's actually just a straight line. And it doesn't change as quantity changes. It's fixed. I'm going to uh, drag the quantity axis straight down. But on the vertical axis, I'm going to put cost per unit. The average total cost curve looks like that. If I pick the quantity and the total cost at that level, average total cost is equal to total cost divided by quantity. I am going to do some calculus, but I'm just setting it up, so hang in there. I'm going to draw the quantity straight down there and plot total, average total cost. Let me draw in the uh, total variable cost curve because I'm going to use this later on. And I'm going to calculate the average variable cost. And it turns out if I take total variable cost plus total fixed costs, that gives me total costs right there. Oh, lo and behold. Total cost is equal to total variable cost plus total fixed cost. Now if I take each one of these and I divide by quantity, like that, this all equals average total cost. And again, I am going to do calculus. I'm just setting stuff up, so hang in there. And all this equals to, I'm going to equal sign, total variable cost divided by quantity plus total fixed cost divided by quantity. I'm going to slide that over like that. Now, what I'm trying to figure out here, and I just drew back in the average total cost curve, what happens to average total cost as quantity changes? That's what I'm showing with that. So as quantity changes, how does average total cost change? And that little delta or that little triangle is change in. It's also delta, which I'm going to use that. If I take D, average total cost, so the change in average total cost divided by a change in quantity, which is the first derivative. And that's what I'm trying to show is how does average total cost change when quantity changes? So what I do is I take the first derivative of this equation too, which is D, the change in the top part divided by the change in quantity, plus this total fixed cost divided by quantity divided by the change of quantity. How does that change when quantity changes? Kind of looks a little daunting, but I'm going to walk you through the steps, so hang in there with me. I'm going to show you how this works calculus-wise, and you're going to be like crazy economists. I'm going to use a quotient rule, which is, and I have two functions, and to divide them, I use a quotient rule. You probably forgot that from your calculus, but I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to do these one at a time and step you through this. I'm not going to skip any steps. I'm not going to read it to you, but this is the first derivative of how it looks or the quotient rule, and I'm going to step you through this step by step and do this one at a time. So f of x is that top part or the numerator there. g of x is the quantity. So I'll write this over. The first derivative of the average total cost is equal to g of x, which is this q, times 
the first derivative of the total variable cost as a function of q, and I put a little prime there, minus f of x, which is total variable cost as a function of quantity, times the first derivative of q, which is 1. Take all this and divide that by g of x squared, which is q squared. Now I am going to do the other part, that one right there. Let me hide that, okay. Turns out f of x is this total fixed cost, the top, the numerator. And g of x is the denominator, that q right there. So now I'll write this over again. So I'm going to add, put the plus sign, g of x, which is just q, times the first derivative of total fixed cost, which is zero. It doesn't change as quantity changes, minus f of x, which is total fixed cost, times the first derivative of the q of g of x, which is 1 again. So I take all this divided by g of x squared, which is q squared again. So q squared. Well, I hope you're hanging in there with me, and I'm going step by step. So I'm going to rewrite this over. I just dropped the 1. That's all I did when I rewrote it over. You can pause it if you need to. q times 0 is, of course, 0. And total fixed cost times 1 is just total fixed cost. So I have all this minus total fixed cost divided by q squared. I just simplified it. Okay, I'm going to move this up a little bit to give myself some space. You may have to watch this video a few times to get the hang of it. And also, I'd encourage you to watch the first two videos of this series as well. And before you, and maybe even come back to this last where we're at right now. Okay, let me get back to where I was. I'm just going to factor out this q squared or sum of the q. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So let me write this over again. Factor out a q, so I have 1 over q times this now. This total fixed cost by, by q. So I just factored out one of the q's. Now I'm going to write it over. And so I have 1 over q First derivative of the total variable cost. The Q's cancel out. That's where I'm doing that, those two Q's. Minus total variable cost divided by quantity. Minus total fixed cost divided by quantity. Pause it if you need to. Look at that. Learn it. I won't go as far as say love it. So now I have 1 over quantity. And do you remember what the first derivative of total variable cost is? It's right. Marginal cost. I knew you did. Anyway minus average variable cost minus average fixed cost right there getting there so another step of course so i'm going to write it over again and what's crazy i have marginal cost now minus that all that right there is average total cost so average total cost is equal to average variable cost plus average fixed cost. But I have a negative, so I have to multiply everything times a negative, like that. And voila, I have negative average total cost. Okay, anyway, hang in there. Pause and take a nap if you need to. Anyway, here we go. So now I have the average total cost curve. And I want to say, how does it change when quantity changes? And that's what I've got right now. Stuff on the right-hand side of that equal sign, that's my first derivative. And also marginal cost. I put the marginal cost curve back in. A table here so you can follow. Draw this in. And then put a line here. There we go. This part of the graph, marginal cost is less than average total cost. The slope or marginal cost minus average total cost is negative. Of course, that should be a negative outcome. And average total cost is decreasing in this area right here. It's all going down right there. So at this point, marginal cost is equal to 
average total cost. Of course, this is zero. Marginal cost minus average total cost when they're equal is zero. So average total cost is constant, flat line slope. Now, marginal cost is greater than average total cost. The slope is positive. And of course, that's positive above there. And here, average total cost is increasing. So there. So let me summarize. The first part of the graph, here, let me draw that in a little gray. Let me gray it in for you. Right there, we have economies of scale. And on the right side, we have diseconomies of scale. I have a feeling if you completed all three videos, I, wish I should be giving you a t-shirt or something, or at least a t-shirt for watching this video. Write me, maybe I will.